Hey. Okay, hi there everybody. I'm Laura Wilson. Um, and yeah, welcome to this webinar. So we're gonna talk be talking about all things to do with the alkaline diet and fruits and carbohydrates. Carbohydrates and fruit are contentious issues in our day and age. Um, we're taught that carbs, we shouldn't be eating too many carbs and shouldn't be eating too many, um, too many fruits and things. So I'm just gonna we're gonna debunk some myths, we're gonna get down to the kind of nitty-gritty of what kind of advice you should be following. So without further ado, I'm going to switch to my um, presentation mode and we will get started. So it's great. We've got loads of people here. We had over 100 people register uh, and most of you are live on the call. So that's fantastic. So now, just a bit of housekeeping before we start. Now, there should be um, questions, a space for you to ask your questions on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you want to submit your questions there, uh, 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 if you can see the questions box, put just put your name in, just reply so I can see. Um, mm, 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 or there should be a chat box as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to get to your questions at the end of the call. So throughout the webinar, then do submit your questions uh, there on the right hand side. So yes, they will appear on the right hand side of your screen. So any other housekeeping, just, just to turn off your phone, turn off Facebook, shut down other apps, shut, shut down other internet windows and email and stuff like that. Give yourself this hour or so um, to just really focus on this because this information is the type of information that's going to stand you in good stead for years to come with your diet and health. So, you know, Saturday afternoon, we're in the middle of the Easter weekend, so I appreciate you being here, um, but this is going to make a difference to your life and health and food choices. It's going to enable you to navigate the, the food market um, <laughs> in, a, in a much more educated, informative way. So let's get into it then, shall we? So I'm going to switch to my presentation. So here we go. There we go. All right, let's play from the start. So, the alkaline diet, fruits and carbs, how much should I be eating for great health and weight? Quick overview before we start of who I am. Why should you listen to me? You know, many people have been on my subscriber list um, for my websites for years, so you know who I am. Some people are new, so just to give you a little outline as to why, you know, I know what I'm talking about on this stuff. I'm Laura Wilson. I'm a nutritionist, registered nutritionist and author. I'm author of the new book, the Alkaline 5 Diet, being released on Monday all around the world um, on Hay House Publishers. Um, I managed the medical research in the UK's largest health organisation for a couple of years. Um, I used to be overweight in my teens and 20s. I was, yeah, overweight, unfit and smoked heavily. I was known as the pot noodle kid at university because I ate fast food all the time. I was really lethargic, had really bad health. Um, but now I've turned it around. I'm lean, fit, healthy, gave up smoking, don't drink, don't eat chocolate. You know, I'm, I'm pretty clean in my diet. Um, I'm lean, fit, healthy, look younger now in, at the age of 35 than I did when I was about 25. And um, the culmination of all this health stuff is I'm able to run marathons and ultra marathons. Last year, I ran about how many? About eight or nine marathons and one ultra marathon of 32 miles. So, yeah, this stuff works. This way of eating that I'm going to show you really works. Um, and since 2008, I've helped thousands of people around the world through my health websites and books to turn around their health. I've learned the secrets of optimum weight health, healing, energy, and slowing down the aging process. And I want to help you, um, yeah, with giving you um, some some information, tips, and um, ways of eating that are going to really help you do the same. So a quick whistle-stop tour of the alkaline diet as well, because if you're new to the alkaline diet, you might be thinking, well, what is that? So before we get into the fruits and carbs thing, very like such a high level quick overview of the alkaline diet the alkaline diet is based on blood ph not food ph so um we want to be alkalizing our bodies alkalizing our bodies for good health because our blood needs to be maintained at this slightly alkaline ph on the acid alkaline scale um of 7.35 so it's all about working in harmony with your blood ph to keep it at that optimum level your body will do this anyway but if you eat foods that promote acidity rather than alkalinity your body's going to be constantly battling to maintain this slightly alkaline blood ph so it's nothing to do with food ph 
because in fact lemons are alkaline forming and things like milk and meat are acid forming so lemons in their physical form as fruits are acidic you know you just you taste the lemon it tastes really tart and acidic um, whereas things like milk are alkaline but the reverse is true when it's processed through your body so when metabolized lemons leave an alkaline ash which help contribute to this um, uh, uh, alkaline ph of your blood and things like milk meat dairy products all that kind of stuff is actually acidifying so it's not about food ph it's about blood ph and Otto Warburg discovered, he was a, a Nobel Prize winning chemist, he discovered and won the Nobel Prize for discovering that cancer cannot thrive in an alkaline environment. Let that sink in for a second, I'll repeat it. Cancer cannot thrive in an alkaline environment. So when your body and your blood is, is really kept at this alkaline level and it's, yeah, it's not struggling against acidifying foods and things, then cancer cannot thrive. So what does that say about the cure for cancer? When you alkalize your body, cancer cannot thrive. I'll leave that with you. But um, but yeah, so the whole alkaline diet is, is completely grounded in science. It's been proven for over 100 years. Uh, it's not a fatty diet. It's not something that you can do for a few weeks to lose weight and then you're going to fall off the wagon. It's long term. I've been on this diet for... Uh, almost 15 years now and I've seen improvement in health um, year on year on year and it's sustainable so it's about working optimally with your body's nutrition nutritional needs and um, yeah and the way it works for optimal health as opposed to fat a fatty kind of thing that might work for weight loss but is not going to be good for your health okay so that's a very quick overview of the alkaline diet so what fruits are alkaline seeing as we're talking about fruits on this webinar what fruits are alkaline forming? Well, alkaline diet lists vary quite a lot, actually. Um, and that's one of the questions I had. Um, somebody emailed me to say, how come there's so much discrepancy? Um, for example, Dr. Robert Young, who has written a book called The pH Miracle on the alkaline diet, he says that no fruits are alkaline or a few fruits, grapefruits, um, avocados, which are more like a vegetable, tomatoes, which are more like a vegetable, lemons and limes. So if you wanted to eat fruits, he's saying eat lemons and limes. Well, no one really wants to eat lemons and limes, do they? So you're stuck with grapefruits as alkaline fruits. Well, um, and then other lists say the whole spectrum of fruits are alkaline. So why is there so much variation? Um, and I'll show you why. Food combining is of major importance. Now, purists like uh, Robert Young would say that if you, all fruits are, uh, are acidifying because of the, the sugar content. Well, we'll get to the sugar issue later, but that aside, um, one of the major things when eating fruit to take into consideration is the combining issue. So you don't wanna be combining fruits with um, meat, you don't want to be you don't you don't want to go and have like um, a pizza or a big steak and chips and then have fruit on top of that because the fruit digests really quickly and that's gonna sit on top of the steak which takes maybe 24 hours to digest it's really heavy on your system and takes a long while to digest and that fruit is gonna sit there trying to get through and ferment and then that causes acidity so that's why the food lists differ um, on the sugar issue and also um, fruits can be acidifying if, if combined wrongly. So when you eat fruits, you need to think that you need, because they're so quick to digest, they're so easy to digest, you need to eat them on their own or at least before all your other foods, okay? Which goes against conventional wisdom to sit and eat fruit before eating a main meal, but it really works, okay? So get straight in. How much carbs should we be eating? Um, I'm just going to just rattle through this webinar because we haven't got long um, and I just want to give you as much information as possible to really help you. So how much carbs should we eat? Cut straight to the chase. There is a myth in our society, in our Western world, that carbs are bad. And this has really only come about in the last 10 years or so. So this is not something that's long held, a long held belief. This is a new thing. And this is perpetrated by... The diet industry, um, and I suspect the meat and dairy industry, who want to sell their non-carb based food products. Um, so that's the myth that goes around. And people, I meet so many people who've got fear of carbs. Oh, I can't eat too. I can't eat bananas. I can't eat too many carbs. I'll put on weight. 
it will give me diabetes or it's not good for me, I can't digest all that fruit. So there's a lot of um, fear around eating too many carbs um, for weight and health in our society. In truth, we need to eat a lot of carbs. Um, this is the truth. We need to eat a lot of carbs, okay? So, um, if basically, to give you a, um, the overview of, of the macronutrients we need, so macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So all of our food that we're eating needs to be in one of those three categories. You've got vitamins, minerals, waters, salts, electrolytes, all that kind of stuff. They're micronutrients, and water is, is not a, a, a macronutrient. So basically, all your food is broken down into carbs, proteins, and fats. And what I'm saying here is we need to focus our diet on eating a lot of carbs, which flies in the face of all the newfound um, diets, such as the paleo diet, um, military diet, South Beach diet, the zone diet, you know, diets that have been around for a while, Atkins diet, all these kind of new fatty diets as well. This goes against all those diets. So you might be getting a bit kind of nervous at this point or thinking, well, hold on, how can that be? I'm not sure about this. So stick with me. So why so many carbs? Let's look at two examples. We're going to look at IV drips and marathons. So intravenous drips to start with. So when, um, when you're in your body's in a state of emergency, so if you really need to get some nutrition in at a um, in a in a rapid way to nourish your body, so maybe you've gone out on a really heavy night out, had way too much alcohol, and you've gone into hospital and they've had to pump your stomach and give put you on a drip. You know, this is obviously a not a very good situation, not a very good example. But say that was to happen, and you need to be put on an IV drip. Um, or if you're in a severe road accident or you've got a severe kind of um, disease, say you're really withering away with something like cancer um, and you can't take in or you've got a really severe stomach issue, you've had an accident, uh, <laughs> don't want to dwell on too many bad things here, but um, you get the issue. So say you're in hospital, you can't eat. What are they going to give you? An IV drip. Well, what's in that IV drip? Vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, small amounts of lipids, fats and amino acids proteins and carbs a high amount of glucose or dextrose in pure carbohydrate form so what does that tell you it tells you tells us that when the kind of when your back's against the wall and you need to get nutrition in quickly carbs is the go-to um, source of macronutrient let's look at marathons so when and I'm speaking from a lot of experience here, when I train and run a marathon, I'm not eating lean chicken breast. Before I get up, if I'm going to be running 30 miles on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock and I get up at uh, 7 or 8, say, and have my breakfast, what am I eating? I'm not sitting down and eating four chicken breasts. Um, I'm not sitting down and eating... Um, good fats in the form of a lot of flaxseed oil and coconut oil or flaxseed meal. No, I'm not eating that. I'm eating carbs. So I'm eating bananas, dates, and then on the marathon itself, on the out on the run, on a race, for example, you might be eating gels, so carbohydrate gels. Some people eat jelly babies. I don't eat that because I'm vegan. Um, but the point is, it's pure sugar <laughs> carbohydrates. And if you've ever run any kind of race and you've hit the wall, you'll know that as soon as you have like a banana, um, a sports drink, some dates, instantly, instantly, just like that, your energy will go up. Now, if you were to eat a chicken breast <laughs> or some coconut oil, it wouldn't have the same effect. It'd probably have a net, very negative effect. So what does that say? Again, that we should be eating carbohydrates. The lesson is in extreme situations, we need carbohydrates, okay? And so why should it be any different from extreme situations to everyday situations? The extreme situations just highlight um, our body's needs, but the everyday situations, so if you're a busy parent, if you're spending eight hours at work, if you're going to the gym, um, you know, we still need to fuel ourselves in the same way, just maybe in a bit less proportions, but we still need to get in the carbs. 
So furthermore, we have a natural sweet tooth. We've got sugar receptors on our tongues. So why is that? If we're not designed to be eating carbohydrates and sweet things, why would we have that? We don't have a meat receptor. We don't have um, a fat receptor even. We have a sweet receptor. Um, and our brains run exclusively on carbohydrates. Now, this is quite groundbreaking if you didn't know this already our brains literally all they can function on is carbohydrates and there's a study done by dr greenwood at the university of toronto and he found that glucose increased short-term memory by 25 percent he had two test subjects or test groups and the one he gave carbohydrates to were able to and then they had to memorize all these different cards and terms and things their memory was 25 percent better than the people who hadn't eaten anything um, were under carb okay so glucose if you the upshot is if you're not carbed up if, if you're not giving your body carbohydrates your brain and your concentration levels and your yeah your brain functionality is really going to suffer and i don't know about you but i'm you know this is kind of obvious stuff when our blood sugar is really low i know that i can't concentrate on things properly i get cranky my mo i get emotional sometimes yeah, I'm talking really extreme carb, um, undercarbed here. And the same in a marathon, I just get all wobbly. I, I, sometimes you go delirious even. That's, in it, again, in extreme situations. But it's you need the carbohydrates to function properly. So how much carb should we be eating? If this is the case, what, you know, what, should, this, what should we be eating on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, the optimum ratio, as, um, as put forward by a guy called Dr. Douglas Graham in his book, The 80-10-10 Diet, says that we should be eating by calories, 80% of our calories by carbs from carbohydrates, 10% from fats, and 10% from proteins. And after eating this way for many years, I'm inclined to agree. And there's many other people out there who also are absolutely thriving on this ratio. So this is lower fat than... Um, than most diets, most diets are much higher in fat. In fact, the standard Western diet is around about 30 to 40% fat, if not higher. Um, and often that is made up by a lot of saturated animal fats, which is just a recipe for degenerative disease. Um, and the protein is low as well at 10%, but this is still in completely in line with World Health Organization guidelines, and you will thrive on 10% protein. You won't get any kind of deficiencies, I've been on about 10% protein for years. I've got good muscular tone. I'm strong. I'm lean. Um, yeah, I'm mus muscular. Muscular. So, yeah, 80 10 10 is what we're looking for. And when we keep the fat low, this keeps us trim and it prevents the big three Western diseases, which are cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. And we're going to look more into diabetes a little bit later. And when we keep our protein levels low, this prevents ki kidney and liver problems. The trouble with a lot of the high protein diets these days, so many diets uh, focus on being high protein. It's good. It can be good for weight loss in the short term. Yes, that's unequivocal. That's, that's true. But at the expense of what? At the expense of, like we looked at before, brain function, which is why these high protein diets cause severe tiredness, um, you can't concentrate. I know a lot of people in my gym who are on high protein diets, bodybuilders, and they're just cranky all the time. They don't, they're not really um, vibrant. They're not alive. They're not full of vitality. They're just going from meal to meal, um, struggling. Okay. So, and I also know various people who've had come into a lot of health problems from eating too much protein. Um, a friend of mine, Kath, um, she used to be a bodybuilder in her 20s. And only after a few years of eating a high protein diet, she had severe kidney failure and she had to go on kidney dialysis. And then eventually she had to have a kidney transplant. And she's now got three kidneys because her kidneys really weren't functioning properly. So she was given a third kidney. She was put on 14 steroid drugs per day, which she was on for years. She then switched to a low fat, plant based, high carb vegan diet so cut the animal products and she's cut back on her steroids she's given up all but one of her tablets per day and her kidneys are back to 90 percent function and she severely regrets ever going down the high protein route so yeah take that lesson from her and many other people who run into problems eating high protein high carbohydrate also turns off your fat genes 
What do you mean turns off your fat genes? Yes, we have fat genes. Um, Dr. Neil Bernard, who is an amazing doctor, I really respect his work, wrote a book called Turning Off Your Fat Genes. And literally, as a, as a nutrient, our bodies are inefficient at turning carbohydrates into fat. It's easy for our bodies to turn the fat of a pig into the fat of our bum. <laughs> um, but it's not so easy to turn uh some brown rice into fat sat on our hips okay so our bodies are very inefficient in turning carbohydrate into fat but it's very good at turning fat into fat so when you keep the fat low you don't put on weight and it becomes easy to lose weight the other thing is when you keep the fat low and eat high carb you're getting more fiber you're getting you're eating bigger portions per calorie because uh fats have nine calories per gram and carbohydrates only have four so you can eat a bigger volume, feel fuller with less calories. So it's a, it's a double benefit there, um, which means sustained weight loss becomes easy. So what about good carbs and bad carbs? Well, most people think that carbs, foods, if I was to say to you, what is a carb? Most people would come back with an answer like, oh, ice cream, donuts, chocolate, cakes. Oh, I can eat a cake, it's full of carbs. Pizza, oh, I can eat carbs. Um, spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese. Well, actually, if you look at this, if you look at each one of these foods, like um, in terms of their macronutrient ratios, you'll find that these are actually high fat foods by calories. For example, 100 milliliters of ice cream, two small scoops, has around 245 calories, and 131 of those calories are fat. So that means that 50% of the ice cream is pure fat. So whatever's left, say there's half, half of it is protein, half of it is carbs, that means only 25% are carbs, 53% are fat. So actually that's a very low carb um, food. So look at spaghetti. Spaghetti bolognese has an average of 380 calories per serving and a whopping 191 of those are fat. So again, 50% fat. The spaghetti is only 96 calories, so only 25% of that meal is carbohydrates. So what we want to be doing is we want to be increasing the ratio of the carbs. So you want to be focusing on, if you have a spaghetti meal, cut the fat, cut the meat. You want to be having spaghetti with a low-fat tomato-based sauce with maybe some, um, excuse me, maybe some kidney beans. So you want to keep it, yeah, low fat and get that carb ratio up. So you can have, the beauty of this is, it's only small tweak, tweaks a lot of the time. You can still have the same meals, but one could be high carb and one would be high fat. For example, I go out with my family for meals. Um, we go to, we go and have a roast. So if you're in the UK, you know exactly what a roast is. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's tradition on Sundays here. So you go out and you have normally like a big cut of meat, lots of roast potatoes, um, and then lots of veg. Well, me and my partner, we go out and we'll just forget the carvery, the cut meat and the Yorkshire puddings and the high fat things. And we'll just have vegetables with a little bit of vegan or vegetable gravy. Um, yeah, and then I'll have a little bit of sauce, maybe cranberry sauce. So it's turned a very high fat, high protein meal into very high carbohydrate, lots of fruits and veg. So you can make simple switches. Um, and, and also, if you wanted to, if you really would miss your meat, you can have a nut roast instead. So, okay, we've established how much carbohydrate we should be eating. What about fruit? Where does this come into it? Is you know, people still get nervous about fruit and diabetes and how much fruit should I be eating? Since a lot of dietitians, um, and remember that dietitians are funded by the, the health organizations who are funded by the medical companies who want to sell you drugs they don't particularly want you lean and healthy they would like quite like to sell you drugs over the long term so they don't particularly want to cure your disease they want to um, maintain it with their drugs so bear that all that in mind um, which is why it's important to go to an independent nutritionist when you're looking at when you're taking health advice okay um, so how much fruit should we be eating well, fruit is the optimum form of carbohydrate. If we look at all the different things carbs could be, rice, potatoes, um, polenta, uh, millet, um, so any type of grain, really, buckwheat, they're all high-carb foods, potatoes, um, vegetables, 
they're high carb but they're low calorie so you know obviously it's going to take a lot of broccoli to make a <laughs> to get the calories in so vegetables are carbs fruits are carbs okay so out of all of those things fruits are the optimum form of carbohydrates why well they're sweet and satisfying obviously everybody loves fruit the very fact that we have shampoos and shower gels that are fruit smelling and fruit based means that we've just got this deep down innate subconscious affinity to fruits you don't have a shampoo that smells of you know we've got pig flavored shampoo or um, roast beef flavor body wash you don't have it yet you have pineapple pineapple and lime shampoo um, cranberry and raspberry um, shower gel people at uh, perfumes yeah perfumes are all fruit based so well a lot of them are fruit vanilla that type of stuff so we've got this innate affinity to fruit we like eating them there i don't know i've never met anyone who doesn't like eating some kind of fruit some people like really like oranges you may really like bananas other people might really like watermelons or dates or durian or you know but there's across the spectrum of fruits there's so many and they're so sweet satisfying delicious okay they're full of nutrients basically fruits are like a little easily um, accessible delivery package of all the vitamins that we need um, which is wonderful and they're mostly eaten raw so the trouble with cooking foods is so if you're cooking potatoes or rice they're great forms of carbs to eat but in the cooking process you do tend to you can lose up to around 80 percent of the nutrients so the very fact that most fruits you, you eat raw means that you're maintaining those nutrients you're maintaining the live enzymes which are so beneficial to your body and health as well they're they're um, they've got antioxidants so they're anti-aging they're anti-cancer they're satisfying yeah it's just great all round for your overall health so the upshot is we should be eating a lot of fruit so how are we supposed to eat our fruit um, obviously raw and whole so a whole apple whole orange grapefruit banana that's the obvious one but also you can make smoothies and green smoothies so just blend up like a handful of blueberries with a banana and um, maybe a handful of spinach as well to add that real alkalizing chlorophyll aspect the greenness of the vegetables in there so yeah smoothies juices so this is where, yeah, you would juice the, the fruit, which means that a lot of the insoluble fiber is taken out, um, whereas with a smoothie, all that is left in. But the benefit of a juice is you can have, it's higher in calories, it's more dense in calories, and a lot of people find it easier to drink a juice, but basically it just comes down to preference between a smoothie or a juice. Dried fruit. So I'll often eat just dried pineapple or dried dates or dried figs or dried prunes. Uh, so yeah, dried fruits, perfectly fine. Stewed fruits, again, I'll eat um, quite often. I'll stew up. I get a, a couple of organic fruit and vegetable boxes delivered each week. And sometimes there's some fruits which I'll eat over others. So I'll quite often have a situation where I've got a big box of apples that are about to go off fairly soon or they're really ripe and I'll just stew them all up and eat them no sugar added nothing just stew them add in a few raisins maybe add in a couple of dates a little spoonful of cinnamon and it's beautiful it's lovely yeah real nice and then bananas and dates there because they're dense calorie fruits um, then yeah you're going to get the calories in there's more calories in there's 100 calories per banana whereas only 50 calories per orange for example and dates 100 grams of dates is about uh, just under 300 calories so whereas to eat 300 calories of oranges you'd have to eat six of them so it's an easier way and a very fast food way of getting in calories you know how easy it's to take a banana with you or a pack of dates so let's move on what about diabetes um a lot of people think i can't eat and i hear this all the time i can't eat all that sugar i'll get diabetes or i've got diabetes there's no way i could eat all that sugar okay and that's a legitimate concern because that's what we're told for the most part through media through um, health organizations through adverts on tv so it's a fair assumption to come to that conclusion but this is something which is uh, is likely to be completely new to you, and I would say, don't take my word for this. Go away and look into it. Okay, so write this down so you can go away and look into this a bit more. 
um, if you haven't heard this already. Diabetes is not a problem of high sugar, it's a problem of high fat in your diet. I'm going to repeat that again. Diabetes is a problem of high fat, not high sugar. Okay? Why is that? Well, um, because your fat, if you have a high fat diet, then basically that fat clogs up the intracellular, um, intra, no, hold on, the intramyocellular, um, basically your muscle cells, <laughs> the intramyocellular lipids, which is a fancy term for saying um, the fat in your muscles. That fat in your muscles prevents the carbohydrates from getting through. So then you've got this problem of like a backup of sugar, um, which is not able to get through to your muscles and do its job. So it's kind of like Dr. Neil Bernard pioneered this. He was given um, a lot of money to do this research by the um, uh, National Institute of Health. He conducted a huge study on diabetes, reversing diabetes with a high carbohydrate plant-based diet. And this is what he found conclusively that um, the problem is that the fat, if you have a high fat diet, it acts as kind of like chewing gum in a lock. And if you think of the carbohydrate as the key, the carbohydrate is trying to go into the lock and it's not able to undo the door, it's as in it's not able to get into the muscle and do its job, provide energy because of this fat in the way. So then it produces insulin problems because you've got this sugar hanging around your blood. Um, so yeah, it just causes a complete imbalance with things in your body. So, but what you find is when you take the fat down low, blood sugar normalizes. And I've seen this with um, with subscribers, with clients, with friends. A um, friend Joe, who I met in Thailand last year at the um, Thailand Fruit Festival, he had type two diabetes, and um, he's he puts he literally he'll post his blood sugar le levels online on his YouTube channel and show that um, he's able to lower his blood sugar with a high sugar with a high fruit diet which is to a lot of people you look at the comments on his YouTube videos um, and people can't believe it so his YouTube channel is called the best transformation if you want to go and check out his yeah his stats and things um, and this isn't unusual Dr. Neil Bernard has written a book on this and did this study reversing the program for reversing diabetes with a high carbohydrate diet. So go and check this out, please, um, because it goes against conventional wisdom or conventional medical propaganda, should we say. Um, yeah, so I really want to highlight that to you. So you really don't need to be worried about diabetes. Look, if if eating a lot of fruit and sugar gave you diabetes, I would have had it years and years ago because I eat so much fruit, so much sugar, so many carbs. Um, okay, I don't eat refined white sugar because there's a big difference. Refined white sugar is just void of nutrients. Yes, it's carbohydrate, which is will help your brain function and it will fuel you, but it's devoid of, of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, okay? So steer clear of the white sugar, yes, obviously, but white sugar is not the same as fruits. It's not the same as rice, okay? It's not the same as potatoes. So you still want to be eating the carbohydrates. So yeah, Dr. Neil Bernard's groundbreaking research showed that reversing diabetes with a high carb, low fat, plant-based diet is completely achievable, okay? So, okay, so we can eat carbs, we should be eating fruit. What does a day, um, a daily meal plan look like then what should we be eating well i'm going to walk you through my five optimum daily meal types and this is from my book um the alkaline five diet which is just about to be released so yeah in that book i i tell you or i t show you five optimum daily meal types hold there a second there's someone outside um working in the garden that's making a noise i'm gonna shut my window Right, there we go. That's better. That's distracting me. Okay, so there's five optimum daily meal types, um, and this is what I found to really work. It works to get in the right amount of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, fruits, vegetables. Um, it's alkaline, it's tasty, it's satisfying, it's sustainable, it's systematized, super healthy. Okay, so 
Number one is the blood cleanser. So this is the meal, and it's not a meal as such. This is your first thing in the morning drink, and it can be either lemon juice, because as we looked at right at the start of this webinar, lemon juice is highly alkalizing. So, um, so yeah, you have lemon juice in warm water, and that will just cleanse your liver. It's alkaline. It's really good to have first thing in the morning. Or you can have wheatgrass juice. Wheatgrass is... It's, I've been advocating this for about 10 years. It's, it's basically a panacea. It's got like around 97 vitamins and minerals. It's got full spectrum amino acids. It's full of chlorophyll. It's a blood builder. It's a blood cleanser. It's anti-aging. And Wigmore used wheatgrass juice in the 60s and 70s to reverse terminal cancer patients. I can't say enough good things about wheatgrass juice. And if you look at my book, The Alkaline 5 Diet, on the front cover is a wheatgrass juice shot. So yeah, I love wheatgrass juice. So Start off your day with either a, a lemon juice and warm water or a wheatgrass juice shot in either powder form, mix up a teaspoon with a, a pint of water or juice your own and have a little shot and drink it. Fantastic. Second meal. Now, the rest of the meals you can have in any order, but just bear in mind what I talked to you about uh, food combining. You want to have your fruit on its own or before other things, okay? So the next meal is your vitamin vitality meal, which is your fruit meal. So this is around about four, five, six hundred calories, depending on how, whether you're a man or woman, how much exercise you're doing each day. This is a meal of a hefty meal of fruit. So you might want to have for this meal three oranges, two apples and a pear. Or you might want to stew up a load of apples and have a big plate of ap stewed apples. You might have um, a big fruit smoothie. So yeah blueberries kiwis pineapples bananas um but it's yeah so it's around about four or five hundred calories of fruit so it's it, we're going away from the kind of one little portion of fruit like a small apple is your daily fruit no no you want to be thinking bigger bigger amounts of fruit because when you're eating the fruit you're not then craving the other junk you're not craving donuts, you're not craving pizza, you're not craving um, ice cream and chocolate and all the things that people think are carbs and need to steer clear of. You'll naturally steer clear of that fatty junk anyway when, you, uh, uh, when you're carbed up by eating sweet, juicy, satisfying fruits. So that's why we want to be eating, we want to be thinking bigger in our amounts of fruit. The next meal is your fat loss sugar meal, or also known as your high performance sugar meal. And so if you're looking to lose weight, this is the secret weapon to losing weight. If you're looking to perform at a high level, if you're an athlete, if you're a runner, if you're a cyclist, if you're a swimmer, if you're a busy parent who needs um, a lot of energy throughout the day, then it's high performance. Because this meal will do two things. It keeps you carved up, it keeps you alert, it keeps you energized throughout the day without the need for caffeine and other stimulants. And if you're looking to lose weight by eating um, a lot of high sugar fruits, then as I mentioned before, you won't want to eat the high fat junk foods. So you'll find fat loss becomes quite effortless because it also turns off your fat genes, as we looked at before. Um, it's inefficient for your body to turn carbohydrates into fat. So the whole thing just works nicely with each other. You eat less cravings. Um, more fiber so you're eating less uh, and it can't convert that food your body can't convert that food as easily into fat so the whole net overall result is easy fat loss and sustainable and if you're already at your optimum weight and you're not looking to lose any more weight you just simply eat more calories of, um, of fruit of your sugar meal and it becomes a high performance meal okay so what is this sugar meal well it's bananas and dates talked about before that bananas and dates are high calorie so yeah you you have a substantial amount of your calories from bananas and dates and if you don't like bananas or dates i'll come to that in a minute fourth meal is your raw alkaline mineral meal so this is where you're getting leafy greens and vegetables in because as well as the sugars the fruits it's important to get um, alkaline minerals from your vegetables so you need leafy greens things like broccoli and it's best to have it raw um, and this is only 100 calories, by the way, of your whole daily meals, your whole daily allowance. So it's only a small proportion, but it means you're getting in the, the real benefits and live enzymes of raw alkaline vegetables. So it could be a big leafy green salad. It could be a green smoothie. So you might want to mix up some pineapple, like my activator smoothie. 
which is on my website if you go to laurawilsononline.com um, and then click around in the top free resources I think there's a, a free sheet PDF download for my activator smoothie which has got like cucumber and celery and spinach but also pineapple so it's really sweet but it's got lots of alkaline raw mineral uh, raw vegetables in it as well and then your fifth meal of the day is your hearty cooked fiber meal so this is your warming satisfying bulky um, meal that everybody thinks is like comfort food and they think they should be avoiding so I can eat pizza I can eat spaghetti I can eat curries and rice I'm saying go and eat all of that you can have a vegan um, and animal product free low fat pizza you can make a buckwheat base stick on a load of tomato sauce and tomato puree tomatoes peppers courgettes um, skip the cheese you don't need the cheese bit of oregano parsley in the oven for a bit Cr comes out crispy delicious i've made this for friends and my partner lovely delicious okay um, spaghetti again just skip the meat skip the fat you don't need oil in it just boil up some um, wholemeal spaghetti or pasta and then add into it a low fat tomato sauce some herbs and spices uh, maybe a little stock cube maybe even um, a squeeze of agave syrup for a bit of sweetness and then um, yeah serve that just with a lot of, of pasta so you want to up your pasta volume and lower the kind of sauce saucy type um, aspect of it then it turns into a hearty cooked fiber meal as opposed to a hearty cooked fatty meal <laughs> Uh, yeah and so you can have rice you can have quinoa and there's so many recipes if you go to my website again laurawilsonline.com go to the blog section and then click on the right hand side recipes I'm there's only I'm adding to this constantly so you might want to bookmark that for continual recipes that I'm going to put up um, but my book the alkaline five diet has got lots of recipes in there for um, curries low-fat alkaline curries and um, spaghetti marinara alkaline style so it's the type of foods that we all love to eat anyway but the beauty is they're low fat um, you can eat more of them they're satisfying and they're healthy as opposed to being unhealthy so there you have it that's the five optimum daily meal types I've been eating this way for years I love it I thrive on it and so many other people do as well so it's optimum nutrients because it covers all your protein and fat needs so we, we're getting about the ratio of 80-10-10, um, which is more than enough protein, more than enough fat that your body needs, and all the carbohydrate. There's no saturated animal fat in this diet. So, But when you eat this way, you'll find that you don't miss it. So many people I know say, oh, yeah, but I couldn't give up cheese. Oh, yeah, but I like eating meat. That the reason for that is often because you're undercarbed and then when we're undercarbed we crave these dense calories and you can I guarantee you um, I've been vegan for years and there's not one thing that I used to like eating as a meat eater and believe you me I was a big meat eater I used to eat a lot of meat I used to eat a lot of chocolate a lot of cake a lot of ice cream um, and there's not one thing that I used to eat as a non-vegan that I cannot eat as a vegan ice cream I make a nice big banana based ice cream vegan ice cream recipe for that is in my book um, there's a lot of meat replacement products that you can have um, yeah so yeah the beauty of it is it's you're not getting saturated animal fat it's just going to clog up your arteries clog up your organs and risk uh, degenerative disease so this way of eating massively lowers your risk of disease and can help to heal health issues as well. Do you know a low-fat plant-based diet is the only diet out there which has systematically got good results for reversing disease, be it cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, anything like that. The only diet that's going to reverse those type of things is a plant-based, alkalizing, animal product-free diet. And that's the fact, okay? no other diet out there that has these results over the long term okay so you might be wondering why all the bananas and dates and what if I don't like bananas and dates well the bananas satisfy a sweet tooth in a very healthy way and they're great for stopping cravings for refined sugary foods so I mentioned this earlier um, but bananas are a super food they're super cheap they're the ultimate fast food you can grab a banana and go if you don't like bananas and dates there's lots of different options you can blend them up into smoothies so handful of dates into a blender with um, 
half a litre of water, you've got a lovely frothy, creamy date smoothie. The, this is the weird thing about bananas and dates. You can make them into all sorts of different kind of consistencies and tastes. Like the banana ice cream I make, I, it doesn't really even taste too much like bananas. It's totally different eating baked bananas from raw bananas to banana ice cream to a banana smoothie. Each one has got a very different texture, very different taste. So yeah, if you don't like bananas as they are, that's fine. There's other ways of eating bananas. Um, add in a load of spinach or greens with your banana smoothie and it makes it kind of less sweet, evens out the flavours. Um, yeah, dates again, uh, blend them up with other fruits and vegetables. Lovely, really lovely. So let's look at some results because you might be thinking, well, I'm still not sure about this. Um, and yeah, you you want to see people, right? You've had results eating this way. What does this do over the long term and short term, by the way? Because I've had great results, but let's see some results, okay? So the result is people get lean, healthy, and energized on a high fruit plant-based diet. This is Freely. She's quite well known. She calls herself the banana girl. She regularly eats <laughs> around 30 bananas a day and she's lost over 40 pounds eating this way. She's the same age as me, she's 35. Um, and like this amount of fruit she's got here, she'll easily eat that in a week or less probably. So she thrives on a high carb, plant-based, fruit-rich diet. Um, yeah. Michael Arnstein, known as the fruitarian, he eats exclusively raw fruits and vegetables, so he doesn't even eat like the rice or anything like that, cooked potatoes. Uh, he wins marathons and 100 mile ultra marathons on fruit. This man will run a marathon at the pace of 5 minutes 40 per mile. That's quicker than I've ever run a mile in my whole life, and he does this for 26 miles. So yeah, it's not as if people are withering away and dying on this type of diet. No, 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 far from it. People are thriving. Um, I mean, he's very, very lean there. He's very thin. That's because he's an ultra marathon runner. Um, but you can also build up, which I'll show you some photos of some people who have kind of gone bulkier with their muscle in a minute. So this is fully raw Christina. She cured a disease on fruit and veg, and she looks about 20 years old, and she's almost 30. I think she had some kind of, maybe I think she had diabetes. Uh, I need to check this because I, yeah, I can never remember what she had, but she had some kind of disease, um, and it's gone fully raw fruits and veg, some seeds and nuts, and looks fantastic. Harley, durian rider, um, cycled over 6,000 kilometers in January 2013 on a fruit high carb diet. In fact, his tagline is, uh, is carb up. <laughs> and yeah, he's written books on this. He's got a massive YouTube channel. He's quite foul mouth in his talking and he cuts the chase and tells that how it is. Uh, and whilst I don't agree with a lot of what he says about life, his thoughts and views on diet is on the money. Um, yeah, I was I trained with him. I cycled up mountains every day with him out in Thailand last year in Chiang Mai at the Thai Fruit Festival. Um, and he lives his talk, his walk, his talk. He eats a lot of carbs and has got a lot of energy all day, every day. Robert Martin, this guy's 61 years old, got great muscle tone on a plant-based diet. Robert Cheek wins world bodybuilding competitions on a vegan vegetable and fruit based diet and me Laura Wilson gone from overweight smoker in my 20s to lean fit ultra marathon runner in my 30s uh, no grey hair not many wrinkles really um, for my age so yeah it works so um, yeah we're getting to the end of, the, of this section of the webinar so just to say, my, alkaline, my book, The Alkaline 5 Diet, comes out on Monday, 6th of April, all around the world. Um, it, people have been asking me where they can get it. If you can go to alkaline5diet.com, um, and then there's information about it there. You can download a free chapter, there's a video. If you order before Monday, you can get some pre-order bonuses, three bonuses as well. Uh, I'm giving away, what is it? Some recipe cards, like full color, extra recipe cards. Um, a kickstart video, Alkaline 5 Diet kickstart video, how to really get the most out of the book and the diet. And something else. Oh, an interview with me. Um, yeah, our interview about this diet. So, yeah, you, you can get it online uh, from Amazon, from Waterstones as well. I'm doing a signing 
um, in Waterstones, in my local Waterstones, uh, on the 18th of April. That's in Plymouth, if you're around this way. So, yeah, that's my book. You can go and grab a copy of that. So let's get some questions. Now, or let's answer some questions. I'm just going to switch to um, to see whether there's any questions on the side. Okay, so if you want to put your questions into the chat box on the side there, then that would be great. But other than that, I'm going to go straight in with the questions I've had. So people have emailed me this week, so which juicer should I get? Um, it's, I've got the Omega juicer. I've got two types of juicers. I've got an Omega, um, mm, mm, what is it, uh, a masticating juicer, which means it kind of crushes the fruits and veg rather than spins it in a centrifugal way. Like say a Phillips, a big, big thing that spins your fruit and veg. Um, I would go with a masticating juicer, which crushes. You get higher quality juice at the end, a um, bit more expensive, but I would say go with one of those if you had to buy one. Um, you can also juice wheatgrass in a, a masticating juicer as well. Um, uh, and I would, yeah, an Omega is good. You can probably go with a cheaper one. The Omega is quite expensive. I haven't tried any other, but I've heard people say that they're pretty good. So, yeah, go with, go with that one. Um, why do alkaline food lists differ? Well, we looked at that, didn't we, at the beginning of the webinar? So we'll consider that covered. Um, basically, it's some people think that it's alkaline foods in their physical form as opposed to when it's metabolized, or they consider the sugar. If it's got sugar in, it's not alkaline. Um, or if it's combined properly, <laughs> it's not alkaline. So, yeah, that's why lists differ. What about type 1 diabetes? Well, I would strongly suggest go and check out Neil Bernard's work on diabetes, the, his program for reversing diabetes. I've touched on it. I've, you know, mentioned that fat is an issue with diabetes um, and it's carbohydrates and fruit are, are, are not the main culprit here. So type 1, I know, is different to type 2. Go and check out Neil Bernard. He's written a whole book on it. It's not my area of expertise. So um, go and check that out. Do I do one-to-one -one coaching? Yes, I do. Um, and I've got a little offer to, uh, to mention today if you did want to have one-to-one -one coaching with me. Um, so I do one-to-one -one coaching at the rate of, and this is a webinar special, and I can only do this for 10 people, um, £45 per hour if you're in the UK or $67 US dollars. Uh, so yes, if you wanted me to coach you one-to-one, -one, I'd suggest that you email me, laura at laurawilsononline.com that's laura at laurawilsononline.com and just say yes you want to be coached by me um, and we'll set up our coaching call you can have an hour you can have a few hours um, but I can only do this for 10 people and this is a one-off special normally my rate is double this um, and when my book comes out my time is going to be probably um, a lot a lot more scarce given that I've got um, well, I've got like, interviews and events and things coming up. So, yeah, if you want me to coach you one-to-one, -one, just give me an email and we'll sort something out. Um, and I've got also a group coaching program, which is starting in June. So that's June 2015. It's going to be seven weeks online. So um, there's live weekly webinars with me, and this is based on my book, um, The Alkaline 5 Diet, and it's based on the seven-point framework in there for optimum health, weight loss, and healing. So each week we'll be going through a different aspect. I'm going to be coaching through, um, yeah, getting into optimum health. So if you're looking to lose weight, help heal a disease, um, eat in a big, satisfying way, and just really get make this year the best year for you for your diet and health, then I would say this is your best option, really. Um, you also get one-to-one -one support, so you'll get a little bit of time with me one-to-one -one and um, email support. You get recipes and meal plans as well. So, yeah, I just, I've just i been really getting into doing loads more recipes recently, and I've come up with some amazing <laughs> recipes that are all Alkaline 5 diet approved. Um, high carbohydrate, low fat, high nutrient. Um, so yeah, you've got meal plans as well. So there'll be other people you can connect with and we're basically going to be going on this journey for seven weeks together and we're going to aim for results. The whole thing here is at the end of the seven weeks, we want to have a result. So I'll work with you to develop what you want that result to be um, at the end of seven weeks and then we'll put a plan together and I'll be coaching you through it once uh, every week. 
So that's for seven weeks starting in June. So if you wanted, um, if you wanted to join that, then uh, you can. This is a testimonial from one of my previous clients, Thomas Dunn from Ireland. This is a bit of a long blurb here, but I, I'll read it just because it kind of, yeah, it really illustrates how it can help you. So I've been doing alkaline coaching with Laura for the past four months, and I'm here to strongly recommend it. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis back in 2000, and for years I've been through some tough times with it. Laura was able to help me really well. We did calls every two weeks, and it was easy for me to get serious about my health and diet. Thanks to her for opening my eyes to how this alkaline diet really, really works, and how it is really putting people on the right track for being much more healthy. I would highly recommend Laura's coaching, mainly because it's a good balance of accountability and support. For me, that was a really good way of motivating myself to stay on the right track. It's a simple idea and our coaching is simple to follow, but it really, really works well and I've seen some amazing benefits with my health. Yeah, so that's Thomas from Ireland. Really enjoyed working with him. So great to see people get great results and he's one of them. So yeah, my online coaching, it's £397 if you're in the UK, $580 if you're in the US, Australia, yeah. So um, if you go to laurawilsononline.com forward slash A5D dash coaching, then you can secure your spot there. I'm limiting it to about 20 people. So again, if you want to get in, um, do it, do it now, because my book comes out Monday, it's going to fill up pretty soon, I'd imagine. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm holding this webinar in advance for my, you know, you, you're a subscriber. So I wanted to give you uh, an opportunity before <laughs> before the rest of the world does, if you like, when my book comes out. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it then. I hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. <clears throat> um, hope it's been useful. I hope it's really opened your eyes as to the carbohydrate issue and made you think differently about it. And I just would say, don't let yourself get duped by the standard kind of propaganda that the diet industry, the medical industry, that the meat and dairy industry food industry put out there you need to be very careful um, I'm an independent nutritionist I'm not tied to any one thing I worked in the health service for years and I left because I didn't agree with the way it was funded and the way it worked so you know I'm not attached to any one particular way of thinking I'm only attached to what works so if you want to benefit from that knowledge and have me help you then uh, then do join me on the group coaching program because we're going to get yeah it's going to be a great program we'll We'll go through it and that seven weeks could be really life-changing for you in a good way. So yeah, it's laurawilsononline.com forward slash A5D dash coaching. Alkaline 5 Diet Book out on Monday. Go and grab your copy if you haven't got one already. It's cheap. It's like £10.99 in the UK, about $14 if you're in the US. It's all right. It's out worldwide so if you're in Australia, um, South America, Europe. Yeah, you can get it in your local bookstop or, or local amazon online um so yeah thank you very much for attending this webinar and if you've got any extra questions just email me reply to the webinar invitation um emails that i gave you and uh yeah and i'll, I'll aim to get back to you if you've got any questions about coaching or the online program or the book or anything else then email me as well so that's it thanks very much hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and i'll speak to you again soon Bye bye